Hi, I'm Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to show you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. In a couple of videos, we've shown you how to send data from the computer to a web server running on the ESP8266. We've done it by using the web browser to specify color data for a strip of LEDs inside the URL as a query string. The other way we did it was by using the command line tool curl that allowed us to manipulate the data and send it to a specific web address. Those two tools work fine for simple tasks, but for anything more complex, we're going to need to write our own web applications. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to write a simple Python script on your computer that will send requests to a server running on the ESP266. So just so we're clear, we'll write two pieces of software. First, a little piece of firmware that will dump on the ESP8266, and it will be running the web server side of things. And also on the computer, we'll write a simple script in Python that will be sending requests to perform some tasks on that web server. As we've been doing so far, we'll start with the simple web server code that you can get by following the link in the description of the video. So I'll make a copy onto a new directory that I'll name web server Python client. And I'll change directory onto the one I just created and make two new subdirectories, one of them that I'll call Python client. That's where the Python script will go eventually. And another that I'll name server for the firmware file that will be uploaded and running inside the ESP8266. I'll move the old file that was named simplewebserver.ino into the server directory and I'll rename it as server.ino. I'll go ahead and open up that file both in a text editor and in a new tab, I'll just open up the file inside the Arduino IDE. If you remember, that file uses a couple of libraries for the ESP8266 and the elements of the library are used to first connect to a local Wi-Fi network and to print out the IP address once the ESP8266 is connected to Wi-Fi. And later it sets up a couple of routes, one that simply prints out a string when a request is sent to the top level of the web address of the ESP8266 and another that when a request is sent to a path called toggle, then it calls upon this function called toggle LED, which simply toggles on and off the LED on the development board. We're going to be uploading the same code to the web server so that we can focus on the Python side of things and trying to send a web request on our own client application. So I'll go ahead and plug in the board. Make sure that the port and the board itself is selected to what it should be. And then I'll just upload the code. We know that it's working. And then I'll double check the IP address of the ESP8266 by opening up my zero monitor. Again, if we don't see it, we just simply hit reset. And the IP address should be printed on the zero monitor. We're going to go back to the terminal and I'm going to be switching directories to where I'm going to be writing the Python client. I'll name the file Python client.py. And before doing anything else, we'll need a module for Python that would allow us to send those web requests. The link is included in the description of this video. I'll copy the link and use the command line utility git to clone or download that directory to the same directory where I'm writing the Python client. You can go ahead and install this module in your entire system or maybe create a virtual environment. But for today, I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to be able to use that library without having to install it in either of those two ways. So the first thing we'll need is the OS module, same as the Sys module. And I'm going to first create a path to the library using the path 
join method. And the first parameter that I'll put in there is the location of the current file, which I can find with the path their name method and using the built-in variable file. And the second parameter will be the relative path to the HTTP lib2 library, which is inside HTTP lib2 directory, Python 2. Next, I want to use the sys module to append to the current path, the one to the library that we downloaded. And if everything goes according to plan, I can then import that library. If I don't have any typos, we can test things out really quickly by running the script. And if you don't see any errors, like in my case, that means that the library was successfully imported. Next, we can create a variable that I'll call HTTP, which will contain the object of the HTTP lib2 library, which will be an instance of the class HTTP. And then we can simply use the method request in order to generate that request to the web server that it's already running on the ESPD266. We'll need a URL and the actual method that we're going to be using, which is the get method. And for the URL, I'll use the IP address of the ESP8266, which we already got. My case is 3.31. And the path where we want to send that request, which in my case will be toggle. If you remember, the response from the server is going to be empty, but at least I can print out the headers so that I can see some information coming back from the ESP8266. I'll capture it in a variable called response and I'll put another one called content, but that, as I said before, is going to be empty. Now, when I run the Python script, the LED should toggle and I should be able to see the headers coming back from the server. So we get a code 204 as we specified, and now the LED is off. If I run it again, now the LED is on. So now that we know how to send simple requests to the web server running on the ESP8266, let's go ahead and include data as part of those requests. We'll be using the Arduino JSON library that we've shown you in detail in another video. So I'll go back to my firmware file and I'll include the Arduino JSON library. I'll add a new route that I'll name jblink. And that route, when accessed, it's going to be calling a function that I'll call jblink LED. Inside this function, I'm going to be blinking the built-in LED on the board a number of times and with a delay in between the blinks that will be specified by data inside of the request. As usual, the function will not return anything and will take no parameters. I'll go over this quickly but we have a more detailed video on how to use the Arduino JSON library. So I'll start with a static JSON buffer object of size 200, which has a method called parse object, which I'll use to look into the data that is going to be passed. That returns a JSON object pointer that I'll name J object and the data we can obtain by parsing the arguments that are sent to the server. One particular argument called plane. Then I can search inside the J object for the data that I'm going to be sending. And I'll call the data that I'm going to be passing for specifying the number of link times. And the delay, I'll call it delay. Those will be string types. The variables I'll name a little bit differently. And I'll just make a simple for loop to control the number of links of the LED. I 
I won't forget to include a server response, which will be empty. We can go ahead and upload the code to our USB-8266. With the code uploaded, we can go back to our Python script and add a new request that will send JSON formatted data to the server running on the ESP266. Going back to my terminal, I can switch tabs to my Python script, and instead of commenting out what I had before, I'll use a conditional statement that evaluates to false so that that code doesn't run. I'll create a new URL, which I'll name URL JSON, and it'll be the same as we had before, but remember that the path will be slightly different. Then I'm going to need a few more things like the headers. For example, I need to set the content type using a dictionary to application JSON. I'll also specify the char set to be UTF-8. I'll also be needing the data that I'm going to be sending. I'll start with a dictionary and the two parameters I'm going to send is the number of times that need to be labeled times. Uh, let's start with 10. Also, the delay, which we named delay in our firmware, that's a parameter that the ESP8266 expects. And let's start with 500 milliseconds. Then we can use the request method starting with the URL, then the method, remember that it has to be post, the headers, and lastly, the data. But we're going to be formatting the data into JSON using the built-in module JSON and the method dumps. That'll be part of the body of the request that we're sending. Similar as before, we're going to be using a couple of variables to capture both the content and the response that is sent back from the ESP8266. I won't forget to include the JSON module so that I can use that method. Lastly, I'll print out the response and I'm ready to run the script. When I run it, I expect the LED to change its state from on and off 10 times. So let's see, one, two. So it's not 10 blinks, it'll be on, counts as one, off counts as one. So it'll be on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And as you can see, the response is empty because that's what we wrote on the firmware side of things. And that's how easy it is to start writing your own client applications using Python and the HTTP lib2 library. If you like our videos, you can go to our channel page and click the support button. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave us a comment. Until next time.